It is Monday afternoon. I am your Bat Bay E. Temple Cooey, and right here in the place to be reviews. But before we get going, hey, remember, bitch slap that like button for me like Batman does Robin. Speaking of bats and bat related characters and things, bitch slap that like button for me. Now, let's break on in to Batwoman episode 19, a secret kept from all the rest. Well, right after we get done with the credits now, shall we? Let them roll. Come with me. Start this week's episode with Hush, a.k.a. Two Guns, Tommy Elliott, I just made that up, shooting random people in the Gotham City library. As he approaches his last victim, you see him whisper his catchphrase, Hush, which is rather ridiculous, but funny nonetheless. Kate is hunting down Reagan because, remember, Reagan absconded with her notebook after that one-night stand. You know, I figured... One night stands usually might steal some money off the dresser, out of your wallet, a little bit of weed. But no, Reagan takes a book that supposedly has the bat weapons in it after kicking her door in. And Reagan plays on Kate's emotions to try to get her journal back. Remember, Reagan is now working with her sister, Magpie. That's right, the one that looks like Luna Girl. Reagan tells Kate that her blonde friend cornered her in a parking lot, put a knife to her throat to try to find out where the journal was. That blonde friend, of course, she's speaking of is none other than Miss Julia Pennyworth. We join Dr. Butler, a.k.a. Mouse in Disguise, talking with a random nurse as he ducks into an electroshock therapy room, which every hospital has, where Hush and Alice are torturing the professor who Hush kidnapped from the library shooting because they think he can translate the Lucius Fox journal. And when they find out he can't do it... Alice just kills him, shocks him to death. That's my girl. So Julia is on her way to get a simple cup of coffee while she's at work at Crow headquarters, because remember, she's a crow now, and she's confronted by Kate regarding the whereabouts of the journal, if she's procured it, and why did she, quote-unquote, assault Reagan to look for it. Now, Sophie joins Kate and Julia, and you can see the ire in Kate's eyes as she watches Julia and Sophie interact Obviously some uh, lesbian jealousy there. So Jacob is briefing the crows on the situation, apprising them of the situation of another abduction of a translator by Hush, and we're off on the manhunt. Arguing with Luke about his loyalty to Julia because of their father's relationship, you know, Alfred and Lucius, they're friends. And he fires back at Kate because she let a one-night stand steal the key to destroying Gotham, or, well, we'll find out later, and Luke leaves. Mary gets an alert about another kidnapping, and they reference the library attack, of course. Mary then spouts some blatant exposition. So this hush guy is kidnapping code breakers because he has the journal, and he needs it translated. Everybody knows you never go full retard. You went full retard, man. Never go full retard. We join Alice, Hush, and Mouse, who have Agent Kim, who they have kidnapped, of course, to try to break the code in Lucius Fox's journal. And when Alice tries to enlist his services and have him decode this, they end up shocking him to death. So Mouse and Hush get into a fight because, well, <laughs> Hush tells Mouse he's nothing but a freak that made out with a radiator. You're just a freak who made out with a radiator. Hey, laser lips! Your mama was a snowblower! So after... Alice regains control of the situation. They have to go over the only code breaker in the city who's not on lockdown. Remember Parker, the young, they made a point to make her a lesbian character that Kate had to rescue earlier on this season? Yeah, well, they send Hush to kidnap her. So nobody cares. running point at the Bat Cave as the screens all inexplicably shut down one by one. Kate is pursuing Hush, but she's going the wrong way down the expressway. They have a little bit of a showdown in the middle of the highway. She uses a little bat grappling hook and... Stops him from getting away in his car, da 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 stops his van. I mean, it's it's kind of a ridiculous scene. But she frees Parker, that young girl I spoke of earlier who was from a previous episode, kind of a callback. And Tommy escapes in a stolen car, of course, because it's not the end of the episode yet, and we can't have him getting caught. Stupid! 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 You're so stupid! Tommy returns to Alice and Mouse empty-handed, and Alice says, that's it, we're doing things my way, boys. Uh, you 
get your bitch ass back in the kitchen and make me some pie. Luke goes to visit Julia because he knows she's not supposed to be in America based on her current job assignment. Kate brings Parker to the Batcave after she rescues her from Hush. Now, Mary is jealous because she finds out that she is literally the last person to find out that Kate is Batwoman and to get to go to the Batcave because Parker gets to go there because Kate's like, oh, it's okay, she's going to help us. Why does Kate keep letting normies in the Batcave? I mean, honestly, you're going to have like a guest list from Studio 54 down there by the time it's all said and done, as many people as she keeps letting in. Yo, tell me with this shit. Luke is getting the story from Julia regarding her issues with her employer who sent her after the journal, and she told him once she found out that the intention was to kill Batwoman, she decided to betray her employer. Kate calls Luke and asks where they are. Luke gives her the location, but a short time thereafter, they're held at gunpoint by Hush because Mouse, remember, can imitate anybody's voice, which he utilizes to do Kate's voice, sending Tommy to the location where Luke and Julia are. Now, taking them back to Arkham, Alice calls, and they threaten to fry Julia if Luke doesn't break Lucius's code, which he tells Alice would take a team of code breakers weeks to decipher that journal. Why are you the way that you are? While Das Wunderkind Parker is hacking through systems that are down in the back cave, you know, using that technology that only a few people are smart enough to use, well, of course, she's just blowing right through it. Mary discovers that a pair of glasses that she picks up and notices all kinds of almost Iron Man tech on, <laughs> which is really funny, can translate Lucius's journal. She figures it out single-handedly that the key to translating the journal is the glasses. And uh, Kate puts them on and looks very lesbian librarian as. And ladies and gentlemen, this week's MacGuffin. Alice is electrocuting Julia with Tommy and Mouse, of course. Before Kate gets there, I mean, they're really dropping the voltage on this poor girl. And, you know, we get a little bit of Alice's personality kind of coming through. Kate comes in. You know, we have this big standoff scene. She offers the glasses for Luke and Julia in return. Luke tells Kate the book doesn't contain weapons, but how to kill Batwoman or Batman, whoever's wearing the suit, not the weapons designs. Remember that. That's what they originally thought. Alice tests the glasses and releases the hostages. And we get the great escape scene where Luke and Julia head to the tunnels and Kate has to make her way through a myriad of extremely large inmates. Alice knows they have to get out, so to create some chaos, she releases every single one of the inmates from their cells. So if you've seen Birds of Prey, you already know what I'm talking about when I say this fight scene is as unbelievable and as cringeworthy as every single fight scene in the Birds of Prey movie where you see either Margot Robbie or Juicy Smollett's sister beating up a 250-pound man that would probably flick him in the head and break their neck because they're so small. This fight scene was unbelievable until she started to get beat up a little bit then it kind of resembled something that probably would happen to a woman ruby rose's size in a situation like that it's a good thing jacob kane and his crow of highly skilled non-incompetent strike team officers arrive instead of worrying about the riot going inside he tells them to lock the whole building down and apprehend batwoman I could not face Palm hard enough at this point. I'm like, you should probably think about securing this asylum before you worry about catching somebody who's trying to stop crime as well, but my plot, right? Ba -ba 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 yeah. Kate goes back to Wayne Enterprises. She's confronted by Luke, who is chastising her for jeopardizing Gotham and Batwoman to, to save him. Then she hugs him and tells him, there's no Batwoman without Luke Fox, which is an amazing admission. Uh, all things considered for this show's narrative that she would say she needs a male character. Meanwhile, Sophie is waiting in the hallway of the Crow's headquarters for Julia, who is returning from IR, as it were. And we get uh, a little concern for Sophie about Julia's well-being, and that leads into something that we all knew was coming, ladies and gentlemen. The Lesbian! <laughs> But that moment is interrupted as Kate shows up, and it's a little bit awkward for Sophie because, well, her and Kate were very close, you know, kind of like the little scissored action. But Julie and Kate 
have to have a discussion. Julia tells Kate that she actually double-crossed the person she was working for because she followed the rifle all the way to Gotham when he was trying to assassinate Kate, and she had double-crossed, like I said, double-crossed the person she was working for because once she found out what they wanted that book for, Lucius's journal, and this is not a he, this is a she, of course, that's the villain, she was not going to go through with it, meaning Julia was not going to go through with it. So this has been a eye-opener because here we were thinking that Julia was going to be the heel in this storyline. She was going to double-cross Kate. Nope. Jacob meets with Batwoman on the roof of the Crow building as he hits the light on the bat signal to summon her. They discuss the mess at Arkham, and he warns her that if he catches her interfering in any activity, criminal or not, around the city of Gotham again, it's war. And this is kind of funny considering that he's basically the only Crow agent other than Sophie and now Julia that is worth a damn because the rest of them are just a bunch of inept morons who get killed at a whim because all they are is fodder. They're like stormtroopers. It's it's hilarious. Mouse and Alice are in the sewers below Gotham after escaping from Arkham. They're attempting to regroup as Alice still has Lucius's journal in the glasses. Mouse is mad at Alice for ruining their lives in Arkham and she orders him to bring Hush or Tommy, as it were, to them because they're not finished with his services yet. So there it was, my review of Batwoman episode 19. Well, summary and kind of commentary on the episode. A secret kept from all the rest. That's right, we're only down to a couple episodes left this season and it has not gotten any better. The viewership, I didn't do a ratings video because it's pretty well self-explanatory how bad this show is, how much it's in the toilet, and they're just going to keep going with it. I hear rumors, I haven't really looked into it too much, that Supergirl is going to be canceled, which would be hard to believe because no matter how much money they hemorrhage, they just keep on plugging this train along the tracks even though it's the tracks are broken the trains falling apart they just keep doing it anyway so i'm going to put it out to you guys do you guys want me to review star girl too leave your thoughts in the comments below on that topic as well as what your thoughts are of this episode overall let's take this thing home shall we ladies and gentlemen mr conway twitty See the spark. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to bitch slap that like button. On the way out the doors, we do appreciate you watching the videos. Please consider sharing and subscribing as well. Here's the links to where you can find us all across social media at TB2BR on Instagram, Facebook, the Place to Be Reviews page, the official Place to Be Reviews fan page. That's our private group, Twitter, and past podcast anchor, iTunes, and Spotify. Hail the Fandom Collective. You can find our great content over on that awesome channel. Go subscribe to the Fandom Collective today. They'll be on an upcoming podcast we're having here. Also, hail the Fandom Menace. Hail to thee, my subscribers. You are the ones that make this worthwhile. Be sure to have a good day and a pleasant tomorrow.